All right, guys. I I told you I would do a little uh, little talking about the Jaguar heads. Have to thank Stan Weiss. He hooked me up with Mark. Mark knows way more about Jag stuff than I do. He's going to be stopping by Saturday the sixth. Hopefully, he's going to bring a whole bunch of really cool stuff. He sent me a bunch of pictures, some cutaways, stuff like that. I could actually I could actually show you the pictures. They'll be on my phone, but they're better than nothing. Now, this one I kept completely stock. Now, I did make I did make a mistake and right here, you know, notice this has got a big lip where the aluminum is way bigger than the seat. I did hit this little spot with the burr and I didn't mean to. But when you get on a roll and you're porting, sometimes you forget which ones you want to leave stock. So this is going to have basically stock chamber, stock ports. We'll be able to get stock flows out of it, okay? Like the next one over, stock chamber, ported ports. Now, they're only like roughed out quickie ports, but we should be able to get a good idea how much we moved up from the completely stock stuff to quickie ported stuff. I actually did two ports like that. These are both the same. Now, I may attack them different ways to learn different things, right? Now, something like this, let's not use this one. Let's let's find the one that DV did. Okay, this one is the original DV chamber. Now, I don't think he'll be upset if I go over this. I think he, he'll probably do a video on this as well. At least he had me talking about uh, this chamber design at his place. I don't know if he's ever going to use that footage or not. Maybe it didn't turn out good enough to use. I'm not really you know, too concerned. All right, let's go back to the completely stock one first, and we'll talk about how it was originally designed. I forget the name of the guy that designed it, but this is the high energy head, okay? Before this head existed, it looked more like a diesel. The, the valve seats and everything were, were flush to the surface, and uh, the, com the combustion chamber was built into the top of the piston, very much like a diesel. But it got, it got made good power, but it had horrible fuel economy. So it was right around the time where uh, oil embargo and so forth was going on. So they needed to squeeze some mileage out of this. So they found this one engineer, and he designed this. And it's got this strange shape. Supposedly, when the piston comes up the top dead center, the way this is shaped will blow blow through this deeper section. See, this goes down about a hundredth of an inch right here, the sharp edge. So it's, they wanted to get a very, a very tight circular swirl pattern, basically in a pre-chamber, okay? So this would light off and then it would, it would travel across and light the whole thing off. It's an interesting idea. I don't know how well it works in actuality. I mean, I know they said it got about the same power and three miles per gallon better, which is more efficiency, right? If you're burning less fuel to get the same power, it's a good thing. Now, let's take a look at the one DV designed and why he designed it the way he did. Okay, so I got to do this one hand holding the phone and one hand pointing at stuff. Okay, this ridge is no longer straight. It's angled. Okay. Why did DV do that? Well, he didn't want a sharp edge here. He wanted it to be able to flow out the exhaust better. Remember, our exhaust flow is going to be something something like this, right? Towards the center and out. So, we need to be able to... I mean, you can see by the stock shape, right? This is relatively straight, and this is kicked out a decent amount, which is the way it should be shaped. Okay. The uh, problem with the exhausts is they're very, it's a very low port. The intakes are raised quite a bit. They're really not, they're really not in bad shape. But let's, let's continue on with the, the chamber. So, DV took a big piece out of this, okay? You can compare this to the completely stock chamber. And same thing that we do on, you know, wedge heads. 
This is his plateau. Now, you can't make it a perfect plateau because it's got this big dip in it, okay? If, if this was filled in, then you could really do a nice plateau out, and that would really help, but we can't. Plus, we have a plug and stuff in the way. So, he wanted to this to come out quite a bit and a nice radius to help help the flow this this way. You hear my, my wife laughing, cackling like a hen? She's nutty. Oh, well. So, will that hurt our basic design for the swirl? It's an interesting thought, right? Because as the piston's coming up, some of it will go this way, and then some of it will go this way, and they'll converge right around here, okay? That may not be a bad thing. We will find out. Now, remember, DV, DV said most uh, JAG guys get these to about 400 horsepower, and then they basically stall. So we need to get this to 500 horsepower, which is a decent step up. If you think about it, it's, it's a big step up. But the intake ports really aren't bad. They have they have a nice high radius. Let's take a look at some of the pictures that Mark sent us. He sent us some cool stuff. You're going to get to see all this stuff in person soon, but might as well get us going with it now. Okay, not sure how well this is going to show up going from phone to phone, but you can see it's a pretty cool design, right? You got two huge plenums. Each plenum feeds six cylinders on one side. Each one has its own throttle body. Mark did custom uh, air intakes to the throttle body. Hopefully, if all goes well, he will bring one of these manifolds and uh, we'll be able to bolt it all up on on the bench and see what uh, what's up. Okay, hopefully Mark is going to bring this whole setup here. He's got a, a old jag head. He's got some cutaways. Now you have to remember, I'm taking I'm taking video off of an old another phone, so it's it's pretty ugly. But the one on the left is the exhaust port. Notice how low that exhaust port is. Okay, they could have made it a lot better than that. But the intake port is nicely raised. All right. And uh, we'll be able to do, get some nice flows out of that, no problem. Now, one of the things Mark did say was that the intake manifolds uh, work no problem on the bigger engines. Now, they made this as a 5.3, a 6.0, and a 7.0 as far as liters. And uh, the intake manifold's good enough. 